Yeah. So here we are speaking about standard input uh, is the quantity of input required to produce one unit of output. We will be using. This is an estimate of how much units you will be using to produce one unit of output. That's standard. And standard price is nothing but a pre-estimated price. Company expects to pay for one unit of input. Okay, very clear. So standard input is quantity of input you need to produce one unit of output and price is nothing but what you pay for one unit of input. Standard cost is nothing but the cost of producing one unit of output. So I'll be, I'll be writing it standard input. Quantity of input to produce one unit of output. Then comes standard price. What you pay for one unit of input. Then comes standard cost. It's nothing but the cost for making one unit of output. Cost for making Okay. The standard direct metal cost per unit of output is the standard metal input. So that's what they are see, saying that terminology should be clearly understood. Standard direct material cost per unit of output is nothing but the input what you have taken for making one unit of output into standard price. So standard quantity into standard price. Okay or standard input quantity into standard price. Standard direct labor cost per unit of output is nothing but the standard direct labor hours into uh, like uh, how many hours like is allowed. So standard direct labor hours allowed for one unit of output multiplied by standard price per direct, direct labor hours. So standard direct labor hours into standard price per labor hour. Standard price, you can just take like that. Okay. So application rate per unit, the standard cost application rate per unit is the standard or predetermined cost per unit based on budgeted total cost divided by budgeted production. So that's we have already discussed. So let's say if the total cost is 10,000 manufacturing over it and then uh, like divided by budget, so standard cost application rate per unit. So I'm speaking about applied cost. Okay, so I'm speaking about applied cost. So uh, like, you know, standard input for standard output. Actual input for actual output. Then standard input for actual output so here applied comes into picture okay so yeah yeah so the standard cost application rate per unit is the standard or predetermined cost per unit based on budget total cost divided by budgeted production so if i if my budgeted total cost is like ten thousand dollars this is the budget i made for material and I want to make 1000 units of my uh, like material. OK, so what is my application rate per unit? So my input would be this for some uh, some output, correct? So my application rate per unit will be $10. So standard cost application rate per unit is the standard or predetermined cost unit based on budgeted total cost by divided by budgeted production. So these estimated costs are applied to the actual production. That's what I'm saying as production takes place throughout the year. So this cost what you have estimated, you'll be multiplying with the actual production to get the. M a total cost, OK? 
uh, for that particular activity. Differences between actual incurred cost and cost applied to production are called are reported as variance. That means standard input for actual output minus actual input for actual output would create variances. Very simple. Okay. That will be learning in the next topic of variance analysis. Now there are types of budgets, static budget, uh, which is like you fix some units that will be good, that you're going to produce and only that uh, taking that into consideration, you prepare your budget and flexible is nothing but if you prepare more or less, what's going to be the cost for a particular activity that comes under flexible. So now entering into the new uh, that is standard cost setting standard costs. So uh, like uh, there are various methods with which you can set your standard cost with activity analysis, historical data, target costing, strategic decisions and benchmarking. So let's uh, discuss the first one how we can set standard cost with these various methods activity analysis. So like let's say uh, we, we can read this point. Activity analysis involves identifying and evaluating all the input factors and activities required to complete a job or a project on an operation efficiently. So how much inputs you want to make uh, a particular uh, to, to complete a job or to complete a task? That's what you see. Activity analysis is the most accurate way of determining standard cost. It is probably if it is pro pro properly executed, of course. So activity analysis should be performed by people from several different areas, including product engineers, industrial engineers, management accountants and production workers. Production product engineers specify the components to be used in manufacturing of a product. Industrial engineers analyze the procedures required to complete the manufacturing process. Yes, so the product engineers, they, they, they know like uh, what, what components they require to make a product and in, industrial engineers see what kind of process they will be using uh, like to make that product. So production workers are interviewed to gain their input. Management accountants work with engineers to complete the analysis. So activity analysis specifies the quantity and the quality of the direct material, the required skills and experience of employees who will produce the product. So what the activity analysis, uh, analysis in under what under activity analysis, what they do, they see how much quantity, what quality and direct of, of direct materials and the skills required uh, uh, like skills and experience required in, in an employee to produce a product and the equipment to be used in producing the product. So machines and all. So management accountants calculate the cost of direct material, labor, the overhead and other items to determine the total standard cost. So as I say, direct material per unit, labor uh, like uh, cost per unit and overhead cost. So these three when you add you get standard cost. Okay. Now historical data. So based upon the past history, like how they've been producing, how many units they've been producing and uh, like you see, uh, you don't see much more changes in your activity levels. So what happens? You have a historical data based upon that. You set the cost of the product. Target costing. You fix a target uh, like uh, revenue. Okay. You fix a target revenue. You want so, so and so revenue to generate like one lakh, and you set a tar target cost like what to to make some products during eighty thousand. So your target profit is twenty thousand dollars. Okay. So target costing is like here we have seen. So target costing is used when a firm has a specific selling price at which it desires to sell its product. That means they want to sell it some specific price, which they already have decided pre decided. Okay, so target cost is the cost that yields the required profit margin for the product. That means if they have fixed some revenue, if they have fixed some cost, they get desired results. Isn't it so? Of course, the management then needs to figure out how to actually produce the pro product. Yeah, then they have to see the processes required to make that product. Then comes the strategic decisions. So see, I'm speaking about Kaizen process. So strategic decisions can also affect a product standard cost. If management has made a strategic decision to perceive Kaizen, that is a Japanese term for continuous improvement, then with more and more uh, passage of time and uh, like uh, with more experience, they try to ascertain the cost of a product. Okay. And uh, 
with efficiency okay so other strategic decisions can affect a product stand cost for example a management decision to replace an obsolete piece of equipment with a new machine would require an updating of standards and standard cost of course so when you go for improvements then you have to change the standards also then benchmarking you create a benchmark a standard that you want something to make at this particular uh, like uh, at, uh, per unit you want to make well, whatever the cost you want to incur is this particular value or figure that's called benchmarking okay so input into the standard so you fix a input like how much input you will take definitely and then and then you also like have data of other firms who have set some standards uh, who are operating in similar uh, uh, like uh, similar area of the business in which you are then what happens you like kind of take uh, collect data from that and, and your own data and then you try to create a standard benchmark okay like uh, you will be buying something at that particular price and then you will be making some particular product of some fixed units and then uh, that will give you the standard cost okay then who should set the standards really speaking uh, the managers the management who are involved in budgeting process should set the standards so the, we have already discussed about the types of budgets what are made in the companies authoritative participative and consultative i don't want to discuss again this one we already discussed about this correct in details then what we can do is in the next session like tomorrow whatever the class we take we'll be going for establishing direct metal standard we we'll go from here okay this one just a second now we can wind up this one and then go for forecasting techniques okay okay sir thank you so much uh, like uh, because i have one more session in 10 minutes because of power cut it got interrupted otherwise i would have taken a like a continuous session okay hello yes sir yeah okay sir thank you so much then tomorrow i'll take the class thank you